Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk to you about the divergence and integral tests. And let's just start out by jumping into the divergence test. And the divergence test is kind of our first line of defense when we're trying to figure out if a series converges or diverges. So if we want to figure out does some infinite series converge or diverge, the first question we ask is, well, what about the sequence that makes up this series, okay? It's very nice that, look at this right here, the a sub k's. What if we take the limit of the a sub k's? What happens if we take that limit? Well, two things could happen. Either it's zero, or we get nothing, or it's not zero. If it's not zero, it diverges. We're done, completely done. And the reason that is, is think about this for a second. Um, if something has hope of adding up <clears throat> to a nice number, eventually the numbers have to start getting small. If they don't, like if you add 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, what do you get? Infinity. What if you added up a half plus a half plus a half plus a half plus a half? It's infinity. What about 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1? Infinity. So they have to get very small very quickly to actually add up to a number. So if the limit is not zero of the actual sequence numbers, it diverges and you're done. So the divergence test is a very nice test but the only thing that it can tell you is if it diverges. It can never tell you if the series converges. Here's a quick little example just to show you what I mean. Like if we want to know does uh, the sum in going from 1 to infinity of negative n over 2n plus 5, does this converge or diverge? And uh, what we could do is we could just use our nice divergence test and look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the a sub n's. So of negative n over 2n plus 5. When we do, uh, this is a simple limit. The answer is negative 1 over 2. And that is very much not equal to 0. And so by the divergence test, we have that the sum in going from 1 to infinity of negative n over 2n plus 5 diverges. And we're done. It diverges. Now, uh, does it add up to infinity? Does it oscillate? We're not really sure. We just know it doesn't converge. And that's usually enough that we uh, that's all we care about is does it converge or does it diverge. Oftentimes in our uh, talking about infinite series, what we really want to know is does it add up to something or does it not. And in this case, without doing much work at all, we can say it doesn't. Now, what if it would have been zero? What if the limit in this case would have been zero? Then we don't know. This is the divergence test, and that's very important. It's the divergence test. It never tests for convergence. Now, I said does it converge or diverge, but really we'll never know if it converges by the divergence test. We can only figure out if it diverges, okay? So if you're using the divergence test, you can only figure out if it diverges, nothing else, okay? That's very important because so many people try to prove that something converges using the divergence test. And if you think about that for just like a couple seconds, you'll see that doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, so that's the divergence test, and that's kind of our first line of defense. If the limit of the sequence values doesn't go to zero, we're done, it diverges. That's very good. Okay, so let's talk about another test that helps us to figure out whether or not um, <clears throat> something converges or diverges. And we're going to, this test that we're going to talk about next is called the integral test.
Okay, so in the integral test, um, first let me show you a couple pictures. And I'm going to use um, our friend the harmonic series to help us out here. Okay, so the harmonic series is the sum in going from 1 to infinity of 1 over n. Uh, by the way, uh, this series diverges. Okay, so let's look at this uh, series. And if I start adding this up, let's put some little tick marks on my graph here. Um, so one, uh, I'm just going to draw some rectangles here. If n is equal to one here in my series, then what do I get? I plug in one for n and I get one over one, which is one. So I'm gonna go up one, I'm gonna make a rectangle, and I get some area. Okay. Then if I plug in 2, I get a half, so I get a new rectangle. Then if I plug in 3, I get a third, and then I get a fourth, then I get a fifth, and you get the idea. Okay, and it gets very small. So what if I were to, so to speak, make a dot at the edge of all these rectangles on the right side and kind of connect the dots with the function f of x equals 1 over x. Okay. Do you kind of buy the story that the the rectangles that I've drawn here are under the curve? Uh, the rectangles are always under the curve. So if I integrate this curve and I get a number, then the rectangles are under that number. And if they're under that number, they converge. So in other words, if I can find take the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx and I get something, then this thing must converge. Well, what happens? Well, let's do it. What's the antiderivative of 1 over x? I suppose that's ln of absolute value of x evaluated from 1 to infinity, right? And so what do I get here? If I plug in infinity for x here, I get infinity minus 0, which is infinity. And so what happens? Uh, this thing diverges which doesn't really tell me anything about my function. But, wait, uh, let's redraw this. And I'll make my same tick marks. And this time I'm gonna draw the rectangles on the other side. So the first one is up here at one, then a half, then a third, then a fourth, a fifth, a sixth. Get the idea? And now those same dots are right here. So now the area inside the rectangles is actually bigger than the area inside under the curve. And so what this is saying is Wait a second, how much area was there under this curve? I just said infinite. So how much area is there inside of the rectangles? Infinite. And that's right. But if I would have found that the amount of area under the, rec uh, under the curve was finite here, if that was finite, then the amount under the rectangles would be finite as well. So what this is telling us, now what I just showed is because the amount of area underneath this curve, uh, 1 over x, is finite, I'm sorry, is infinite, then I figured out that this series, the harmonic series we call it, diverges. Um, <clears throat> what is also true is that if this would have, 
if this integral would have converged, then this series would have converged. Now, let me write that down. And th this is what we call the integral test. And it says the following. <clears throat> uh, that the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx and um, the sum in going from 1 to infinity of, um, let's call it f of n, converge or diverge together. And what I mean by that is if this integral converges, then this sum converges. If this integral diverges, then this sum diverges. It's very simple. So if I can turn my series into a corresponding integral and prove something about the integral, then I just proved something about the series. And this is very, very helpful. So if you see a series, an infinite series, and you're like, wait a second, I think I could integrate that guy. Then switch it over into x's, set it up as an integral, integrate it, see if the integral converges or diverges, and then you can conclude that the same thing happens to the series. The one thing that people can do wrong is say, okay, the integral of f of x dx uh, going from 1 to infinity, this is equal to 3. So therefore, this guy must converge to 3. That's wrong. It doesn't necessarily converge to 3, but it does converge to something. So that's the key here is that if one converges, the other converges. What does the series converge to? I don't know. Uh, and we don't necessarily care. We're just trying to figure out does it converge? So this is the general process. Let's look at some specific examples.